This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Whether you bring with you today the spirit of rejoicing or your soul needs lifting up, welcome to this hour of worship here at the American International Church in London. We are glad you can gather with us wherever you are today, safe and well. Let us center our hearts in this time to open them to receive God's gift of divine light and divine love. Will you hear now this call? Christ calls ordinary people into divine living. Exquisite and down to earth, luxurious and everyday rare and commonplace, called to permeate our neighborhoods by making a difference, living in light, and inviting others to taste the goodness of God. God, we flaunt the beauty of your marvelous creation until all are drawn to your wonderful light. Amen. And now, would you join with me in calling upon the Spirit of God to move among us and within us this day? Let's pray. God, awaken me to the truth of your presence, being only in the now of this moment. Lift me up into your arms and remind me that I am your creation and that you in me is the perfection of love. Help me to acknowledge that I am your messenger of love and free me to shine your light everywhere. Let me be the light. Let me be joy. Let me know that I am the reflection of you wherever I am and wherever I go. Amen. And now, as you listen to this music from Jono, May you, in that moment, find a bit of that peace and love of Christ today. And would you also pass that on to those around you, whether it's someone in the room next to you or someone far away via text or email. Peace to you this day. Fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me song, melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of God's redeeming love. Here I find my greatest treasure, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger, brought me with his precious blood. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. My heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. The scripture reading for today is from Matthew 5, verses 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth, 
But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? If it is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot, you are the light of a world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this the love of God was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has beheld God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. That is 1 John 4, 7 through 12. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last week, Pastor Jennifer spoke those beautiful words of Jesus over us. You are the light of the world. Now let me add to that, you are a city set on a hill for all to see. Wait a second. Did I read that right? No, I didn't, did I? Nations and Christians have wanted to say that we are the, the, that city on a hill for a long time. In fact, presidents and world leaders have often taken these words and robbed the language of our scriptures to claim that a particular nation acts as the light of the world, a city on a hill that has God's blessing to rule. Even some Christians have claimed that we are that city on a hill, shining a light for all to look at us rather than those people or rather than those Christians over there who get it wrong. We're in, they're out. We're good, they're bad. We're light, they're dark. This misses the entire point of what Jesus has to say in this Sermon on the Mount from Matthew 5. Jesus doesn't actually call us the city on a hill at all. And what Jesus' words do say is that we are a light that shines in such a way that people don't look at us at all, but look up and see the light. Now, I know you all pretty well. Well, this is on the internet, but I know most of you watching this pretty well. And I know that you desire to live a life that causes people not to look at you, but to look up toward God. How do we live as that sort of light? My beloved ones, let's talk about love. That brings us to our scripture in 1 John that uses the word love in some form 14 times in these five verses that we've read this morning, making one of the most powerful declarations in all of our scripture, God is love. 
I've always found it strange that our scriptures, with the millennia of writing and clarifying, don't assert something with a little more philosophical weight. God is grace and goodness. God is healing and wholeness. God is creation and beauty and order and power. We may be tempted to think, in this time especially, that we need God to be a bit more than love. We need a healer, the great physician, to touch our sick world. We need a provider and a protector. When we hear that God is love, we often think of an emotion, of a warm, fuzzy feeling as God snuggles up to us on the sofa, or when we feel God's calming presence in a fresh summer breeze. It's not wrong to think of God and God's love that way. I often do. But First John tells us something a bit more profound, that God's love has been revealed to us we don't need to argue or philosophize about what God's love looks like, but to open our holy imaginations and look. Look at the self-sacrificing love of Jesus Christ. That's who God is. The one who steps down from heaven to earth who lives a life of humility and service beside those who need companionship the most, who ultimately gives up life itself, standing against the crushing powers of sin and the oppressive powers of an empire. God's people had been waiting for centuries, and it was God's love that proved faithful. It was God's love that protected the people. It was God's love that came for you and for me and for all. That kind of love. Have you ever seen a love like that? A love that gives and gives to the degree it, it draws you in, doesn't it? It pulls your attention close so that you can't look away. Love like that is like a city on a hill that can't be hidden. When you're standing in the dark valley, you can see it from miles away, and you can't help but look up at that love. God is love. Have you ever seen a love like that? You know, I, I think I have seen love like that in some glimmer, some small way. That's why so many of us clapped in memory of Captain Tom this past Wednesday night. If you're in the UK, you almost certainly know about Captain, now Sir, Tom Moore, who decided to try to raise a thousand pounds for the NHS in the lead up to his 100th birthday in the first London COVID lockdown. He stayed at home, but he walked back and forth in his back garden, walking lengths and laps of his garden for his charity walk. And he met and surpassed his 1,000 pound goal and became a national hero of sorts because his efforts inspired donations of well more than 30 million pounds. Now, Captain Tom became a hero, not really because of who he was. No, he did simple actions, actions of love, giving of himself to help others. But that kind of love catches our attention. Well, it's it's like a city on a hill, a light that makes us look up. 
I also think of Sister Helen Prejean. She's a Roman Catholic sister in the Congregation of St. Just- uh, Joseph, living by simple vows of service. She spends her life trying to undo the evils of murder and violent crime in our world. She founded groups that offer support to the families of victims of these crimes, and at the same time, she is one of the world's leading advocates against capital punishment and serves as a spiritual advisor to perpetrators of violence and murderers who are on death row. Sister Helen is probably best known for her book entitled Dead Man Walking that was made into a movie in the 1990s about her experience being a spiritual advisor to a man convicted of kidnapping and murder. She met with him and she talked about faith and God and guilt and forgiveness. She tried to help him find some peace. But maybe more than anything, she simply spent time with him and treated him like a fellow human being. In the movie, Susan Sarandon playing Sister Helen says to the man as he's preparing to go to his execution, I want the last face you see in the world to be the face of love. So you look at me when they do this thing. I will be the face of love for you. Sister Helen is a light in our world, not because she took religious vows, but she gives herself in love to people who are experiencing pain that you and I can hardly imagine. And even more, she offers love to the very people who caused that pain. That's a love that can only be divine. It's almost shocking to us how radically she loves so that we take notice and we can't help but look at her example. Like we might notice a city on a hill and look up from the valley below. One of the charities that Hannah and I support began when their founder realized that we live in a world often defined by the preemptive strike. Our world at its worst imagines some strike coming and imagines the harm that someone else might do to us and strikes first, trying to protect me and us. We do harm to someone else before they can do harm to us. So as they began a charity that seeks to undo the violence caused by war, they called their work preemptive love. Love that moves first. Love that isn't concerned with what the other has done or what the other will do in return, even if they may be feared or hated Love anyway. And if you and I don't preemptively strike those around us, too often we live in the pattern of quid pro quo. Loving, yes, but only when we have at least some hope that we might get some love in return. But 1 John just a few verses after what we've read this morning, we'll go on to say that famous line. We love because God first loved us. The book of Romans puts it that God's love is revealed that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God loves without expectation of reciprocation, without knowing that we will love God in return, God gives God's own self and the very life of Jesus 
in love for us. We know love because God has sought us out and has preemptively loved us. And so we can end where we began with the words of Jesus. You are the salt of the earth because you have tasted the goodness of God. You are the light of the world because the love of God has shone upon you. So, let's shine and help people look up to see the love of God for them. Amen. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh, I laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony. Born of all we've known together, of Christ's love and agony. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. moment in our time together, we collect in our hearts all the prayers of our community and try to make an offering of those prayers up to God. And so we invite you where you are to lay your prayers before God and give voice to them as we give voice together to God in prayer. Let us pray. Divine light, divine love. You infuse our lives and our world with your radiance. You surround us with love. You permeate creation with signs of abundance and beauty, fruit and flower, sunlight and rain, creatures great and small. Your love flows out into the world from a never ending supply. O God of love, embrace us in your tender care. Surround us with your goodness. Wash over us with your grace. Bring us into your light and tune our hearts to sing your praise. Filled with your love, shape us to bear that love in your name. Teach us how to love one another. Plant love where there is discord. Sow justice and compassion where there is hatred and prejudice. Spread peace instead of violence. 
grow interconnectedness between people of every language, nation, religion, race and party, that we might love one another as you have loved us. May there arise in this world such love that hunger, poverty, homelessness, war, loneliness, cruelty and abuse are no more. Send your comforting and consoling love this day to people facing hardship and places of suffering. We ask your healing for all those ill and suffering from COVID-19, for all those who have died, and for all those who mourn them. Strengthen the staff of the NHS and social care, as well as all the key workers attending tirelessly to their tasks. Connect across long distance those separated from family and loved ones. Befriend all who are lonely. Release those held captive to addiction. Give children, youth, adults, and elders each the love and care they need for their growth, health, and well being. Divine light, divine love, we dare ask you to help us love more fervently, to love when love is hard to do, and to remember that when we love, it is only possible because you first loved us. Shine on us and in us that we may reflect your light out into the world. Help us to know you in love and to love one another well, that your love might be known to all. And so it is we pray together in the love of Christ who taught us to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Once again, welcome to this moment of worship with the American International Church here in London or wherever you find yourself these days. Know that you can continue to keep in touch with us via the weekly email, emailing us directly or emailing prayer at amchurch.co.uk if you have prayers or joys and concerns you would like us to lift up throughout the week. Also throughout the week, all of our activities are continuing, but in an online only format. That's everything from Bible study to children's lessons to our Becoming Anti-Racist group and all the rest, as well as an opportunity to serve through our cold weather shelter. It is operating out of a hotel this year for, near Houston. You can get in touch with me or see your email for more details on that and how to get involved. We also have our virtual fellowship hour still at 11.45 if you are watching this on Sunday morning. So do feel free to join us there or at our Zoom service later on Sunday night at 6.30. All this remains possible into 2021 and beyond because of your generous giving. And so as you go out with this music, may your hearts be moved to generosity, to light and to love. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? So let that lonely feeling wash away Maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay Cause 
is when you don't feel strong enough to stand. You can reach, reach out your hand. And oh, someone will come running. And I know they'll take you home. Even when the dark comes crashing through, when you need a friend to carry you, and when you're broken on the ground, you will be found. So let the sun come streaming in, cause you'll reach up and you'll rise again. Lift your head and look around, you will be found. 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 Even when the dark comes crashing through When you need a friend to carry you And when you're broken on the ground You will be found So let the sun come streaming in Cause you'll reach up and you'll rise again Lift your head and look around You will be found My friends, I've heard it said that no one has ever become their ideal self. We all wish that there were things about us that were different. We all want to be someone that we may not feel like we are today. But the truth of the matter is that God has preemptively loved you. That God cares for you and that God takes action for your well-being. Let us be the light of the world by simply trying to reflect a little bit of that love, seeing the humanity and the divine spark of light in those around us. And as you go, may you know that God blesses you and keeps you that the divine light shines upon you and will be forever gracious unto you, that God's face turns toward you continually and gives you peace. Amen.